This is the interactive figure double integral over a general region. In this figure, we will look at iterated integrals and see how one computes those and what they mean graphically. We're given a function f of xy. In this case, f of xy equals 5 minus 0.06 times the quantity x minus 6 squared plus y minus 6 squared. And that defines a surface in three-dimensional space. I can click the checkbox next to f to see that surface. Rotate it around a little bit. And there's an area in the plane that's shaded. So my goal is to figure out what is the volume above the shaded region and below the surface. Well, let me focus on that shaded region just a little bit. How is that shaded region defined? It's bounded by two curves. It's bounded below by the curve y equals 0.1x squared, and it's bounded above by the curve y equals 4 minus x squared over 8. The region is bounded on the left by the vertical line x equals 1, and on the right by the vertical line x equals 3. You can change all of these parameters if you wish. You can edit the, the function. You can edit the, uh, the curves. For example, I could change the lower limit from 0.1x squared into 0.1x cubed. I could change the right-hand limit from x equals 3 to x equals 2. And we end up with a different region that we are integrating over. Uh, let me quickly change it back to the defaults like they were before. The top portion lets us set our parameters for the particular problem, and there are several other examples you can choose that fill in these parameters automatically. The second portion really steps us through the meaning of the iterated integral. Oh, and by the way, I can click the button 3D, 2D to quickly shift my view from a two-dimensional view to more of a three-dimensional view. All right, on to computing the double integral. Step one, integrate f of xy with respect to y. So I fix an x value. So the x value can be anywhere from 1 to 3. I fix some x value. And then I integrate the function with respect to y for that particular x. And what has happened is I've integrated the function f from y equals the lower curve to y equals the upper curve. I really computed just an area in single variable calculus where y is my variable. I can view this as the area of a curtain-like structure where the top of the curtain lies along the surface. Now for this particular x value, I found an area. So I call that area a of x. And I, where I've integrated from the lower curve to the upper curve of my function dy. If I had chosen a different x value, I would have created a different area, but still the formula for a of x is the same, integrating from the lower curve to the upper curve f of xy dy. Now let's go on to step two. Let's integrate the area function with respect to x. And I'm going to integrate from x equals 1 to x equals 3. And when I integrate an area, I get a volume. And we end up here with the volume is the integral from 1 to 3 of a of x dx, which in this case happens to be about 17.78. This is a double integral since a of x itself really is an integral expression. Let me end by making a note on the viewing screen here. If you create your own functions with your own limits, it might be difficult to see it. Uh, use the scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out so I can scroll back, I can get a bigger view of this picture. Clicking and dragging rotates, but also if I hold down the shift key and I drag, that pans the view instead of rotating the view. So you might find those shortcuts helpful as you create your own examples. So give it a try, create some of your own examples, take a look at the three-dimensional view of a double integral, and really think about these steps. Think about the process and how that double integral makes sense.